Hey there, and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. In today's episode, we'll be walking through the process of building some cornhole boards. Now this version is quite a bit different than the last that I built a few years ago. Number one, it's a lot lighter because it's built out of one by fours instead of two by fours. And it also has some additional features like a scoreboard on the back, some beverage holders, LED lights, bag storage, straps, and handles. Today's video is sponsored by Cub Cadet. This is what I use to maintain the yard and what's helping me get the yard games area ready for the next barbecue. Its tubular steel design looks sleek and the open concept makes it easy to work on when it comes time for maintenance. It cuts great and one of my favorite features is the quick adjusting mower deck so I can easily get the perfect depth cut for yard games and the area ready to entertain. If you're in the market for a mower, I definitely recommend checking this one out. All right, if you enjoy this project and find the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And let's go ahead and get started with the build. I started by making a trip to the hardware store to pick up some lumber and pre-cut plywood. I'd recommend using select grade pine so you don't have to deal with warped boards. Cut the boards to size to form the frame. You'll cut four boards for each frame and the long sides will be 48 inches and the shorter front and back boards will be 22 and a half inches. I'm using a miter saw, but a circular saw or a hand saw would do the job as well. You can find the plans and detailed tutorial at diypete.com forward slash cornhole yard game. For today's project, we're going to use pocket holes to connect the boards so all the holes are hidden. Now, if you don't have a pocket hole jig, you can simply pre-drill and use normal screws to form the joints. We'll just fill the holes in with putty later. You'll want to set the jig and collar for three quarter inch stock to get the correct depth. Create two of the pocket holes on the ends of each short board. Next, we'll drill pocket holes along both the long and short boards that will connect them to the plywood surface. To make sure the screws don't go all the way through the surface, you'll need to adjust the jig I set the jig to 7 eighths of an inch stock and the stop collar on the bit to 5 eighths of an inch and then used one and a quarter inch long screws. My younger brother Sam was in town and so he stopped by to hang out and help out with the project. Sam does a lot of DIY projects in his garage back in Bloomington, Indiana when he has the time and he was excited to help out with the project. Drill about every six inches on the long boards and then do three holes on each short board and position the two outside holes so they're very close to the holes we drilled earlier that are positioned horizontally. This way, we'll have room to do the beverage cutouts in a later step. Give the boards a quick sanding with 220 grit sandpaper prior to assembling the frame and we'll use one and a quarter inch long pocket hole screws and wood glue for each connection. For demonstration purposes, I'm not going to use glue for all the steps in case I mess up while making this tutorial, but I do recommend using wood glue for all the joints. Use two of the screws at each corner. Now if you aren't using the pocket holes, I'd recommend using one and a half inch long number eight screws. These are pretty narrow screws which is going to help prevent splitting the boards. You'll also want to pre-drill with a countersinking bit to prevent splitting and so the screw heads go in far enough so it can be filled in later with putty. Now back to the method we're using today. Work your way around each corner, fastening the short boards to the longer side boards. Make sure all of them are oriented correctly with the pocket holes facing down so we'll be able to connect the frame to the plywood. A clamp will help keep the boards together during the process and do use glue at each joint. Pre-cut plywood can be slightly larger than the actual size, but it's usually within an eighth of an inch or so. If needed, it could overlap slightly or you could rip it down on a table saw. Run a bead of glue around the frame and then position it against the half inch thick plywood. Then use one and a quarter inch long screws to connect the frame. Double check that it's snug against the plywood. And if there's a slight gap, simply back the screw out a little and then put it back in. Double check that the screw does not go all the way through the plywood. You'll need to use the settings I recommended earlier or experiment a bit with some scrap wood to get the best settings for your situation and jig. Here's an example if you're not using a pocket hole jig. From the top, you'll pre-drill through the plywood and then insert the screw. You'll sand the plywood and then fill each hole with some wood putty and then do a final sanding prior to painting. The putty is going to be flush with the rest of the plywood and once painted, you'll have no idea it's even there. The next step is to make the cuts for the legs. You'll cut two for each cornhole board to 12 inches in length. And once they're at this more manageable size, measure up 11 and a quarter inches and put a mark. 
Move the miter saw to cut at an 11 degree setting and then cut the board so the shortest portion is about 11 and a quarter inches and then the other side will be a little bit longer. This will give you the 12 inch platform height, which is what it's supposed to be. It may vary a little once it's all attached, but it should be within about a quarter of an inch or so, which is plenty good for me. In my older video, which is linked to in the description, I use a different method to get the angle for the legs and the final height measurement, but this seems to be pretty spot on and it's a bit easier to do. Measure one and three quarter inches down from the top side of the leg, then one and three quarter inches in from the side, which will be the center of it. Use a smaller size bit first at this mark to help the larger bit go in as accurately as possible. Then follow up with a 3 8 inch bit, which is the size of the carriage bolts that will be used. Find a coffee cup or something round to help create the arc for the top of the leg. Place the cup flush with the top of the leg and center it between the sides. Then trace around it. And a compass would work great if you have one, but I couldn't find mine. Cut the arc using a jigsaw and stay as close to the line as possible. Error on the inside of the line, if anything, to minimize the chance of the leg being too tight, which would just require a little extra sanding. Once cut, do a light sanding to smooth over the top and then put them in place. I like to use about an eighth inch spacer while I'm attaching the leg to give it a little clearance from the frame. Then hold or clamp the leg and drill through the existing hole of the leg and all the way through the frame. You don't need to do any measuring since you simply need to guide the 3 8 inch bit through the leg. And then next go ahead and do the other side. Push the carriage bolt through both the frame and the leg. Then use a hammer to lightly tap it if needed. Place a washer and then a wing nut onto the bolt and hand tighten. Then test the leg to check that it moves freely. If it's a little tight like mine was, remove the leg, sand the high spot down, and then check it again. Once it moves freely, go ahead and install the other leg using the same method. We'll add a board between the legs, which will have two holes in it for beverages, and it's going to help strengthen the legs. Measure in four inches from each end and mark for the center point of each hole. I used a three inch hole saw, which will work for most cans and bottles. You could probably get by with a two and a half inch hole if you want a little tighter fit around the can. Hole saws have large teeth and are powerful, so be very careful whenever using them. A little drum sander on a drill works well for sanding the insides of the beverage holders, or sanding by hand works great too. Drill pocket holes on the ends of the board, so we'll be able to attach it to each leg. And I have a small trim router, so I used it to give the beverage holders a nice round over. Measure one and a half inches in from the bottom of the leg and put a mark. Do this at both the inside and outside of the angle so the line is parallel with the bottom angle of the leg. Attach the board with one and a quarter inch screws and wood glue. Check that the legs go down smoothly and that the board is flush with the bottom side of the frame when folded in. If you plan on using larger glass or plastic bottles, you'll want to do the cutouts above the lower holes. Measure in four inches and put a mark. This is going to match up with how we drilled the beverage holes. Then use the hole cutout as a template to do a half circle in the top board that's going to provide room for the top of the bottle. Now for this build, I was sort of adding things as I went, but making the beverage holes and cutouts prior to assembling things might be a little easier for you. Next, we'll make the six inch hole for the bags to go through. Measure nine inches in from the top and then 12 inches in from the side. Mark this spot and drill the hole. I ordered a six inch hole saw from Amazon and it makes it super easy to get the perfect hole and it'd be a good investment if you plan on making additional cornhole board sets as wedding gifts or gifts for family and friends. Use firm pressure and have a steady grip while using the hole saw. Now I get a lot of comments from folks who say I say the word bag funny and uh, we always thought our southern friends and our cousins said it funny by saying bag but uh, a long A is just a, kind of a Minnesota Dakota's accent coming through. Here's an example of how to do the hole cutout if you don't have a hole saw. Use a compass or something round that's about six inches in diameter and then trace around it. Drill a hole in the circle so you can get your jigsaw blade in and then slowly follow the line. You can use a sander to smooth things out afterwards if needed. Next, I test fit the undermount LED ring kit that I ordered from Amazon. It fit perfectly around the hole, but I did have to create a notch in the beverage holder board so it could lay flat when it's tucked in. To do this, I measured in one inch and then used a jigsaw to create a cutout. 
I've always carried the bags around in an ice cream bucket, so I thought it'd be handy to be able to store them with the game. I cut two boards down in length, ripped them to two inches in width on the table saw, and then I also ripped a scrap piece of half inch thick plywood to eight inches in width that will be the cover of the storage area. I did a couple pocket holes in the ends of the boards and then test fit everything. Secure the boards in place using screws and wood glue. Now it's getting to be about time to paint. We'll attach the hardware for the storage area after painting. So now we can remove the light, uh, the legs, and then do a good sanding over the cornhole boards. I like to go lightly over all the edges to prevent chipping and to give them a finished look. Use some 220 grit sandpaper to hand sand around the inside of the six inch hole and to get any other hard to reach areas. I needed a little break from building, so I went out and started mowing to get ready to host some friends. It's kind of funny, but once I get on a mower, it's hard to get me off of a mower and I can be out there literally for hours. It's uh, pretty relaxing to me and instant gratification to get a nice fresh cut on the lawn out there with the Cub Cadet. Now back to prepping for the paint. I measured one and a half inches in around the perimeter and then connected the marks with tape. I masked around the hole so I could create a ring stencil for it. I cut into the hole and then uh, measured out one inch around the perimeter of that hole and then placed an eight inch bucket on the marks so it overlapped all sides of the hole by one inch. Trace and then use an X-Acto knife to cut around the bucket and create a perfect stencil. To create an arrow or triangle pointing to the hole, I found the center under the ring and then measured a quarter inch to both the left and right sides. I then connected tape from the bottom corner to the marks to the left and right of center and then removed unwanted masking using a straight edge and X-Acto knife. I finished masking and then went outside to do some painting. I used spray paint for this project and started by priming things white so the colors would really pop. You don't necessarily need to paint the underside, but I did just to protect it a little bit more. If I did it again, I'd probably brush on paint or a clear coat instead of spraying just since it took quite a few cans and there was a lot of surface area to paint. If it was just doing the top side though, uh, spray paint probably would have been fine, but doing the whole thing took a little more paint and time than I expected. I ended up going pretty light on the underside and it looks somewhat spotty on that side, but it's not really a big deal because it won't really be seen too much and I didn't want to run all the way to town to pick up another can. I finished painting the top side and then removed all the masking and the lines turned out pretty crisp with bleeding only in a couple tiny spots. This process was pretty rewarding. I let the paint dry and then did a couple clear coats. You may need to lightly sand between coats with a high grit sandpaper to smooth out the surface. I painted the boards navy, red, and white since these will eventually have a Minnesota Twins logo um, once I get around to applying a stencil. They've always been my favorite team and this year they've been having quite the season. Let the boards dry and then begin to reassemble them. I was in a bit of a hurry and didn't let them dry as long as I could since I needed to get shots for the video before the sun went down, but it was dry enough to work with and so I started putting things back together. I used some small two inch hinges and then an eye hook latch to hold the compartment area shut. Next up was reinstalling the LED light. Use some short screws to attach it and then the battery compartment with a switch on it sticks to the side with some mounting tape. There's plenty of room for four bags in each compartment and a couple accessories if needed. This was my prototype of the back with the latch, the bottle opener, and a way to keep score. The scorekeeper is just a strip of 26 gauge steel I cut with the tin snips and then magnets I picked up at the hardware store. The steel was cut to one and three quarters inches in width and 19 inches long and then sanded to smooth out the rough edges. I drilled a hole in each corner, added some clear silicone to help glue it on and then attached it to the back of the board. I picked up some rubber pads to protect the boards when they're laying on their side and then screwed one on each side corner. I then attached a heavy duty handle to the top center of each board. The next step was to add some straps made out of one and a half inch webbing and some clasps. I did one for each in case the boards are ever carried separately, but you could get by with just one per set. And then the hardware attached to the board is meant for the strap to be latched to.
Next, I used some heavy-duty latches to secure the boards to each other so they can be carried together as one unit. Just make sure the legs of each board are both on the same side and that the insides of the boards face each other. The two latches hold it together pretty snug and it feels real solid. I had a decal made for the scoreboard and then applied it to the metal. Now they do sell pre-made scorekeepers on the internet if you'd rather buy one, um, but I just made one and it turned out pretty cool. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's project and I hope it inspires you to get out and get your yard looking good and to build some of those yard games and host that next barbecue. If you did find the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And uh, don't forget to comment below and let me know your thoughts on this project and if you have any ideas for other upcoming projects. Thanks again for watching and cheers from Montana.